Greetings, my name is Lynn Holzman, and I'm the Vice President of Women's Basketball at the NCAA. On behalf of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Committee, I'd like to welcome you to a peek behind the curtain of what goes into the making of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship bracket each March. This video series will provide details regarding the informational resources available to the committee, as well as take a closer look at what is included in the selection, seating, and bracketing of the 68-team tournament field. The NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Committee is comprised of 12 individuals that come from member conferences and schools. The mission statement of the committee is to administer the championship with the highest level of integrity. The committee's actions are guided by a commitment to a fair and equitable championship while embracing sportsmanship, diversity, student-athlete well-being, and education. The committee is dedicated to a continued enhancement of the championship experience for all student-athletes, coaches, administrators, and fans. Each year, the committee creates strategic priorities and tasks the women's basketball staff with putting these goals into action. One of the strategic priorities this year, which fell under the umbrella of aligning with key stakeholders, was to create a platform that provides our membership with a look into the selection process. This video series is aimed to provide our stakeholders with a high-level overview of the NCAA tournament selection process and will include four chapters. One, how the committee prepares by watching a lot of games and then the resulting metrics, data, and conference reporting. Two, selecting teams. Three, the seeding of the teams. And four, the bracketing of the teams. March Madness is a favorite time of year for women's basketball fans with the release of the bracket signaling the start of another championship. As you will see in this video series, each step plays an integral part as the committee selects the best 36 at-large teams in the country and then seeds and builds a 68-team championship bracket. Follow along with us on this series and discover what goes into the building of the bracket that you see on Selection Sunday. Hello, and welcome to the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship Selection, Seeding, and Bracketing video series that will provide insight into the work conducted annually by members of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Committee. The series will detail what goes into the process that results in the 68-team championship bracket announced each March on Selection Sunday. Among the resources available to the committee are an extensive season-long evaluation of teams through watching games, conference monitoring calls and regional advisory rankings, complete box scores and results, head-to-head -head results, results versus common opponents, imbalanced conference schedules and results, overall and non-conference strength of schedule, the quality of wins and losses, road record, player and coach availability, and other special circumstances that could affect a team's resume. Each of the 12 committee members uses these various resources to form their own opinions, resulting in the committee's consensus position on teams, selection, and seating. Taking all of this information into consideration, the committee will discuss and vote upon the best 36 at-large teams in the country, which will join the 32 automatic qualifiers to form a 68-team field that will determine a national champion. In Chapter 1, we will detail committee selection criteria. This includes what does conference monitoring entail, what makes up the NCAA evaluation tool net rankings and how are those rankings utilized, what is meant by a team sheet, what are the principles and procedures that the committee follows in building the bracket, and what are the three phases that go into building the 68-team championship bracket. Selection to the tournament is based upon an extensive array of factors, with the 12 committee members spending a substantial amount of time watching games, evaluating teams, and reviewing data. The committee has established a list of 14 selection criteria that they refer to during the selection process, with each committee member deciding on priority order of those 14 factors, with all of these factors part of the overall decision-making process. 
The committee team selection criteria priorities include the following listed alphabetically. Availability of talent, bad losses, common opponents, competitive in losses, conference record, early competition versus late competition, head-to-head, -head, NCAA evaluation tool net rankings, non-conference record, observable component, overall record, regional rankings, significant wins, strength of schedule. Each of the 12 committee members, except for the chair, is responsible for monitoring five to six conferences during the season, either in a primary or secondary role. While it is a responsibility to monitor specific conferences, it should be noted that a committee member is not working on that league's behalf during the selection process. The objective of the program is to share information learned from observing games involving teams in the league and from talking to conference personnel. This process ensures maximum relevant information is being shared among committee members in an organized and streamlined manner. It also affords conferences the opportunity to directly provide information for the committee's review and provides committee members with essential information throughout the season and in advance of the selection meeting. Subsequently, it is the committee member's responsibility to report to the full committee any pertinent data. This includes notable outcomes, the status of injured and unavailable players and coaches, important statistics and data points, and any information deemed worthy of sharing. Aside from receiving information directly from the conferences, the primary and secondary conference monitors will schedule calls with league office personnel beginning about a month after the season starts, with the final discussion taking place shortly before the selections week in March. In addition to the discussions with the monitors, conference officials are asked to provide a weekly form with current information for all teams the conference feels should be under consideration for tournament participation. In addition, the committee conducts several calls from January up until selections, where each member provides updates on schools from each league to his or her colleagues. The conference monitors include the most meaningful information and their observations about the teams from the leagues for which they serve as monitors. Providing a more thorough evaluation of a team's strengths and weaknesses, along with information such as updates on injured or unavailable players or coaches due to injuries, illness, or suspensions is key information for all committee members to be aware. Established in the early 2000s, the conference monitoring program's objective is to assure the maximum amount of information is shared amongst committee members. Another resource at the committee's disposal are the Regional Advisory Committee rankings, which offer coaches an opportunity to have a voice in the selection room. Each of the 32 conferences is responsible for identifying a head coach who participates in three pre-ranking calls and then votes on the top 20 teams in their region three times during the season. These private, cumulative ballots are then shared with the committee for their reference during the season and in advance of selections. One of the many team sorting tools available to the committee is the NCAA Evaluation Tool, or NET, for short. The NET ranking has been used by the committee since the 2020-2021 season. NET measures the team's quality and helps to evaluate team resumes for selection and seeding in the NCAA tournament. This contemporary metric is used to sort each school's team sheet, breaking down each opponent by NET and placing them in an appropriate team sheet category. Net ranking is determined by who you played, where you played, how efficiently you played, and the result of the game. Generally speaking, predictive metrics measure how good a team is, while results-based metrics gauge strength of their resume. The net's predictive element is the adjusted net efficiency, which uses a standard basketball efficiency rating for both offense and defense, but considers the quality of your opponent and the location of the game. The results-oriented factor in the net is the Team Value Index, which is an algorithm set up to reward teams who beat other good teams. Teams are rewarded or penalized based on the quality of the opponent, the location of the game, and the outcome. Games played against non-Division I opponents count in the NCAA statistics and records, but do not count in the net. It is important to note that while very important, the net is one of the many selection criteria that the committee utilizes. Being ranked in a certain position among the net rankings does not guarantee a team will or will not get an at-large invitation to the tournament, as the net is just one part of the evaluation process and one of the 14 committee selection criteria. A team sheet provides a real-time snapshot of a school season to date for the committee.
Games sorted on the left side of a team sheet are indicative of a strong schedule, while games populated on the right side are games played against teams with lower net rankings. Each team's net can change each day whether a team won, lost, or did not play. The women's basketball team sheet provides a snapshot of a team detailing, among many things, overall record, home, away record, record in the last 10 games, net ranking, strength of schedule, and ranking of wins in five different win rank categories based on net rankings. Here you see an example of a team sheet that the committee can access at any point during the season. This sheet includes a key that illustrates what each of the different categories represent. Guide rails for establishing a tournament field have been set called principles and procedures for establishing the bracket, which are reviewed and updated by the committee each summer to match changes in the game. The principles and procedures detail committee voting procedures. These are general set policies the committee must abide by during the selection process that include but are not limited to the following. The committee selects the 36 best teams that aren't automatic qualifiers for their conference to fill the at-large berths. There is no limit on the number of at-large teams the committee may select from one conference. A member shall not answer questions about the team the individual represents, except for factual questions. A conference administrator is permitted to answer general questions about teams in the conference the individual represents. At no point in the process shall a committee member vote for a team the individual represents as a school administrator or a school within the conference they represent as a conference administrator. All votes will be by secret ballot. As we draw near the conclusion of this video, we want to set the table for the next three chapters, in which we will dive into details about the selection, seating, and bracketing process. The three phases of the process are to select the best 36 at-large teams to join the 32 teams that earn the automatic qualifier into the championships, seed those 68 teams in order from 1 to 68, and then bracket them using the prescribed principles.